This episode started and ended very crazy like and then everything that was in between was was very good as well but man I tell you that ending was just disheartening. Boy. Hunter Hunter episode 85 light and darkness but a lot of darkness wow. Well hello my brothers and sisters and uh, former hunters of the nerd nation I as always am Jim and I'm here to bring you another review on the awesome and excellent and just punch in the nuts, terribly depressing sometimes tale of Hunter Hunter. Uh, now, of course, following the events of the last episode, the last couple episodes, as a matter of fact, have, have kind of seen, um, you know, we saw Gone, Killua, and Kite. It looked like picking up some steam, uh, defeating some opponents, taking out some of the Chimera Ants. Of course, we were introduced to uh, Neferpitu, uh, which is the first of the three uh, of the king's royal guards that have been birthed or whatever, you know, come out of their <clears throat> cocoon sacks or whatever. And uh, and certainly we know that, uh, you know, through all the events that had happened there too, that uh, she's aware of Nen and the abilities and everything else and has unlocked it and all this other sort of stuff. So anyway, th this episode, and I did the live reaction for it because everyone, I got a lot of comments, messages, tweets, everything you could imagine, Facebook posts, you gotta do a live reaction episode 85. And in my mind, I thought that uh, the character Kite, uh, I didn't... Let's put it this way, I don't, I don't think anybody is safe at any time, but I assumed, mistakenly I might add, that this episode was going to be some kind of awesome battle or lead up to a climactic battle, maybe unlocking some powers, uh, abilities within Gone or Killua or both. And it even started out that way where we talked about, and they are talking about how um, you know, hopefully they'll learn things from Kite, and then Kite explained to him that, hey, listen, we're not going to have time to, like, be training you and stuff on this. This is a do-or-die type of situation, but you're going to learn what it means to be a hunter. So all those things, all those, that groundwork was laid and set into place over here, and, uh, man, I tell you, just, but by the end of the episode, and in the last shot of the episode was the part that just punched me right in the gut, man. You ever get just socked right in the gut, the wind gets knocked out of you, you know, you're not expecting it, it comes at you. Man, that, uh, the episode winds up going, and I just, uh, you know, to, I guess to kind of summarize quickly and kind of give my thoughts on the events of it, the beginning portion of it, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the camaraderie that's been built between, obviously, going and Killua these last 84, 85 episodes, uh, as well as, of course, um, you know, them kind of kite being like a father figure, maybe an older brother figure. Obviously, we know Killua's family's pretty pretty effed up over here, and uh, and then certainly we know too that uh, that you know Gon doesn't exactly have uh, you know father of the year or uh, the father that really does anything more than you know leave a trail of breadcrumbs and clues and fuck with him with his mind a lot, and we kind of come to the conclusion through seeing these different series of events that you know that Jing put him on this path, you know what I mean, for a reason. So they they at first Gon is is he kind of deduces that he, he must put him on this path so he can learn more from Kite so he can experience so he can become more powerful so he can become more of an astute hunter right and in a way yes he does need to learn the ways of the hunter and everything else but ultimately Jing tells him this is not training time you know um, and then we go and we see that apparently they're unlocking Nen in, uh, in in a number of the different captains and kind of you know higher ups within the Chimera Ant uh, hierarchy right. And uh, so, so that's neat. You see that, and then all of a sudden, F for P two, uh, who looks kind of like this mild mannered, you know, little pussycat type thing creature, uh, is all of a sudden like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go. And she, and you can tell she senses something because then you go and it zooms over and you see kite, and kite senses some shit, and then all of a sudden he's just like, go and kill or run. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? This is a dude that's a master hunter. This is a guy that they talked about as basically like he's as close to being the best and he's the best that Gon and Killua have ever experienced or seen. Now, I don't know that, you know, they didn't really think about Chairman Netero because he only had that little crazy basketball game with him, but I'm assuming the chairman has some top, top level shit too, some top tier stuff as well. But anyway, we're not going to go into that right now. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Neferpitu's just chilling on the side of a mountain looking, and she just kind of senses, smells, whatever, and they can feel that malicious, that malice intent. And then all of a sudden, just poof, one fell swoop, right, as Jing is, or I'm sorry, Jing, as Kite is distracted trying to get going and kill her to get the fuck out of Dodge, bitch just comes in and poof, just lops off an arm right at the elbow, or right at the, you know, it, took, it takes off his arm is the point, you know. And I'm thinking in my mind, really? 
This dude's a master hunter, and you're telling me that one of the royal guards, not even the king, not the queen, nothing like that, one of the royal guards went and took this dude's arm off, and he didn't even have an opportunity to block, to move, to... Now, maybe it was because he was distracted because he was trying to get, you know, Gone and kill whatever. But then Gone's like, oh, and he's going to hulk up, man. He's got fire coming out of him. He's got fucking, you know, he's just looking like he's crazy, man, right? And then Killer just comes over and bam, just knocks him the fuck out, grabs him, and then just takes off, you know? And uh, and obviously, Kite, you know, that's what he wanted to begin with and everything else. Killua knew that, that this bitch was above his pay grade. She, he knew it, right? And then you don't come back to that. You see, you know, you see Kite go and he pulls out his weapon and number three and everything. And she's like, oh, that's your power. Cool, whatever. And then that's it. That's all we see. That's all we see of that. And that's the part that frustrated me. Because then the rest of the episode is Gone and Killua. And uh, and obviously Killua running through the forest all night, you know, to get uh, and meet up with, uh, with Kite's, you know, buddies, his subordinates. And they wind up meeting up with them. Uh, we see that uh, Chairman Netero himself has shown up with a couple of these, you know, pro hunters. One of them reminds me of, you know, kind of tall, thin. He's got the glasses. He's always pushing up. He's very well, uh, you know, well kept or whatever, you know, hair, suit, that type of deal. Reminds me very much of like Captain Kuro from a One Piece, something like that. Uh, and then there's this other dude that's just this huge hulking dude. It's got this giant baseball bat and just looks like he's just extreme muscle. The whole point of this though is that. Even though the, the the big guy keeps going and like just demoralizing and demeaning everything that Killua did, you know, basically like you're a pussy because you ran, blah blah blah. And Killua is trying to explain, I've never felt aura nen like this, man. This 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 malice, this just evil intent. I've never felt it, right? You know, and I just you know the way he had described it, it was like you know like the devil was just reaching inside of his soul and just fucking pulling his heart out, you know. And I get that, okay, I get that that he did the right thing and everything else. And, you know, then what's explained is that, hey, listen, you know, you can never determine the outcome in a battle of Nen users. Because we've seen before that the tides can turn very quickly, and a lot of it's based on that person's intestinal fortitude. And I know I use that a lot, that, that, that word, that phrase, that whatever. But basically, that just means, like, your inner strength, you know, your intestinal fortitude, man, inside of you, you know what I mean? Do you have the stomach for this? Do you have the heart? Do you have the soul, the determination? And that's what... That's what is explained to Killa was that basically, man, you know, you can't determine the outcome before or even during a battle between Nen users because there's that indomitable will that can sometimes go and take you to that next level. And unlike in real life where it's pretty clear cut, maybe in a boxing or a wrestling match, who the stronger opponent is, there's always that Rocky syndrome, that Rocky mentality of the smaller person that has the bigger heart and that just trained harder and that wants it more, you know? So I liked all that. That was great. That was wonderful. And then we go and we see, uh, obviously, it, we it, through these kind of almost like flashback type things, a little montage, Netero basically saying, listen, if you want to join us, fine, but we only need strong people. We're only seeking the strong. We don't need no weak-ass pussy motherfuckers, right? And you see Killua still walking around a town and somewhere, you know, with with uh, with going over his shoulder. And basically, they got to go and kind of train and power up to get stronger. I get that, right? And what I like is Killua is going to have a lot of self-doubt and everything like that. And Killua very much represents like the darkness within people, right? But the fact that even though you you can be dark or come from that type of darkness, that there's still light within you. Gone represents that ultimate childlike wonderment and amazement of reality and life and love and, and the world, man. Gone is just a beacon of light. And when he wakes up, he immediately is glasses half full. Kite's alive. Kite must have just been hiding. Kite was this. We're going to go find him. We're going to rescue him. We're going to power up. Very, very positive. Gone is very much like, I don't care if this restaurant's closed down. We'll find another one. You know, that's Gone, right? That's him. Killua is very much rooted in a lot of the realities of things and then growing up too in the family that he was in, family of assassins and everything like that. A lot of the things that he learned are very much about like control and temperament and learning about weaknesses and things like that and, and trying to predict the outcome of everything. Whereas Gon is very much a dreamer and basically just like, hey, you know, I want to do it, so I'm going to make it happen, right? And I love that, I just love that between those two because it makes them such good friends and it makes them to be such a great odd couple type of pairing, you know? And, uh, and I don't mean in any type of weird way, odd couple. I mean just, you know, like as, as like these, these friends, these couple of main characters, basically, you know. So 
we see all that. That's all great, okay? I like that, you know? And then they go and they give you some hope. And I'm thinking the whole time in my mind, why would you go and introduce a character who's so interesting, has such a great backdrop like Kite, the whole interaction between him and Gone about how he's got his father's light hunter license, and that's what Jean gave him before, uh, you know, he told him to come find him, which eventually, obviously, Kite did. But then he had him hang on to this... Anyway, and then he gives it to Gon. It's like a passing of the torch, you know? It's very much like, you're going to go find him on your own? Cool, here, take this. This may help you. And I mean, it was it was great. It was wonderful, you know? But then at the end of the episode, man, are you kidding me? We don't even get to see the fight. We don't even get to see what happened. And I guess if I saw it and the outcome was was Kite's fucking head sitting in Neferpitu's lap, I, I guess maybe I didn't want to see, actually see the fight to begin with. But, you know... I just felt like the guy deserved more screen time other than just, you know, this crazy fucking maniacal bitch going and just going, oh, I think I'm pretty strong, while she goes and kind of pets his, his hair and then it zooms out and we see that it's his that it's his head that's been separated from his goddamn body, you know? Man, all in all, a very cool episode, but man, I tell you, not what I expected at all. Not what I expected at all. And I guess that's why you shouldn't set expectations when it comes to anything like this, but... Uh, very, very interesting episode, to say the least. My episode question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is ultimately, what are your thoughts on the fight between Kite and Neferpitu not being shown at all on screen? Do you think that it was a good decision, a bad decision? And for those of you that are manga readers of Hunter x Hunter, did they show anything more in the manga? Uh, if you would let me know, obviously, and you know, answer that question in the comments down below, feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. If you have watched this far, I want to thank you very much and encourage you to check out my Facebook and Twitter.